Hey everybody, Jay Krista, Say I Do Forever, coming at you for Book Friday, and this chapter is How, a, how to Achieve Together. Um, so I was thinking about how Krista and I, over the last, what would you say, 17 years now? Mm-hmm. Over the last 17 years of how I got to be the cheerleader for Krista um, when she was starting to build her business as a, a bridal store. Um, she oftentimes felt like she couldn't do it or she felt down or discouraged or like the wind out of her sails or whatever and I had to be the one to come alongside her and say no you can do this don't get down on yourself I believe in you you got this you got it you got it you got it and over the last 16 well 17 years now I was able to come alongside her and help her see that she achieved a massive goal and to be able to hold together a um, independent you know one horse business so to speak that she was able to do that and that's quite an accomplishment for not only any person but any woman because women I don't think get enough credit um, so it was a blessing to me to be able to be her cheerleader all these years and watch her achieve one goal after another. She has so many awards in her studio mm -hmm. to yeah. prove, oh yeah, to mm -hmm. prove how awesome she is. And then we were starting to talk about how we're gonna achieve together again and with all this studying I've been doing, and I've been in there day after day, hour after hour, and I hate studying, but it has to be, it has to be, it has to happen. And when I get frustrated on days, especially you know the last two months she's come alongside me and she says you can do this I believe in you you're smart enough you got the drive you've got the will to succeed and now it's it's your turn to go and achieve and we're going to achieve together we're on the same page we have the same drive the same direction we want to go as far as our goals financially and everything else so and I think that really resonated with me in this chapter yeah. as far as how Krista and I are together and excuse me how we've been together so long yeah and I, I have, think it's huge can I add to that absolutely <laughs> and I could not have done it number one I'm an introvert and I could not have done what I had to achieve in the last 16 years without Jay behind me not only did he have a hammer and nails and was building and renovating mm -hmm. as we went through you know from one shop to the other but also just constantly pushing me out yeah there. I was behind her going come on and I'm like no, 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 no. I don't want you have him. to go talk to this customer <laughs> I know you don't want to call them and let them know the dress is ready <laughs> but you have to pick up the phone and call them <laughs> it was that bad yeah she was super shy before yeah yeah, so I mean, yeah, I couldn't have done what I did without you behind me. And now it's I my turn it. to be your cheerleader. And push me. Yes, and, and push you. And to push me forward to keep going. Yeah. And to not give up, yeah. And I think I our goal in this channel is that you guys back there behind the screen have that in your life. And it's not impossible because mm. we weren't always on the same team. We weren't always fighting for the same thing. And we still struggle through some of that. Right. But we've learned to see each other's dreams as important. Right. And see each other's goals and take turns pushing each other forward. And I think another thing you guys need to realize too is when you're in your relationship with your spouse, and you have these dreams and goals, you need to view the veranda or the other side together. You need to you mm -hmm. try to come together to see what the vision is of the other person. Yeah. So that way you dream together instead of separate. I mean, mm -hmm. and I think that's where a lot of couples get in trouble is they don't include their spouse in their focus or their dreams or their goals or share or communicate or anything. Yeah. So it's super important, super duper important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, we know where we're going. Yeah. We know the goals that are ahead of us. Mm -hmm. At least, you know, my goal is to getting out there and doing home inspections. Mm -hmm. Your goal is to keep 
um, doing alterations mm -hmm. and build your, you know, your no. business, your home business, home base business. Just pay business. some bills and buy some groceries. That's there you goal. go. <laughs> that should be the goal. Yeah. It helps us stay warm. Yeah. <laughs> Keep the heat on. But um, yeah, mm -hmm. it's it's great to have. It's great to have a best friend, and uh, you guys should always strive. <clears throat> you guys should always strive. Are you gonna lose it? I'm not gonna lose it. <laughs> <laughs> You guys should always strive to be your your spouse's best mm -hmm. friend. There's nothing like it. So yeah. Well, yeah. and the, the thing is, I read in this chapter. We are on chapter seven in uh, waffles and spaghetti. Um, women, men are like waffles. Women are like spaghetti, and it's waffles and spaghetti achieving together. And this was a really good chapter yeah. for couples to understand. Number one, their differences. Yeah in how they achieve, yep. in how they are a leader, yep. and how, you know, there were some funny things that I'm going, that's oh, yeah. why I do it like that, and that's why you do it like that, yep. you know? Um, so it's really a great chapter on that. Um, but there was a story in there um, I want to tell you about in here, and we'll do that here in just a little bit. That one almost got me to tears. Um, because I saw so many couples I know that are getting a divorce right now and it's not because they didn't try and it's not because they didn't love the other person it's because they ended up alone and not supporting each other right not because they didn't want to they didn't know how yeah. and I think that this chapter really shows you how you can, number one, understand each other, but number two, how can we be a better cheerleader? Yeah. How can we be a better uplifter? Yeah, the, your spouse needs the reassurance um, that you're going to cheer them on. You're not going to split when things get tough um, in any of the goals that you have. Mm -hmm. um, you need to stay the course you need to stand your ground uh, together, not mm -hmm. against each other, together, mm -hmm. and say, we've got this, we can do this, this is achievable. Um, you know, our goal right now financially is to pay our house off. Um, and that's a big possibility. We can do it. Mm -hmm. I don't normally read on but can I just read, read it. this? Read it. You guys, I know read reading it. on a video is so boring, but... Hang in there with me because... You guys got to hear this story. This story is about um, Bill and Pam and yep. one of the big changes in their lives. Um, yep. And it... Just hang in there with me because there's a point to this and I think it's that... It's not it, that long. It's here to here. Okay. So, you got yeah, this. You got this. So, um, when Pam and I moved to San Diego area um, so I could begin my career as a senior pastor... Pastor, this is Bill speaking. I was very excited. I was convinced God had called me to preach and to minister to families. It was evident that he had led us to a suburb north of downtown, and it was only seven miles from the beach. I hit the pavement running, convinced that this church would grow into a win-win situation for the congregation and my family. It required a pretty intense focus on my part to learn the current uh, processes of the church and diagnose the change that needed to be made. I assume Pam was right behind me and in step with the vision. She was just as committed as I was to the su success of our new pursuit, but she was facing different pressure. She was the primary caretaker of our two preschool boys and we were living in a two bedroom apartment with a very awkward uh, rule. The rule was that children were not allowed to play on the sidewalks, on the grass, or in the common areas of the apartment complex. The only place kids were allowed to play was in the playground, which was on the other side of the complex. Now Pam is usually a very positive individual, but the stress of dealing with two toddlers in a no play zone was more than she could handle. A depression blindsided her and changed her normal normally supportive disposition 
Instead of being proud of me, I heard things like, Why did you do this to me? How long do we have to live like this? Are you ever going to do anything to get us out of this hole? Coming home after a long day of work was like volunteering for an integration. I knew I needed to go home and invest in my family, but I wanted to just spend more time at work. How many, how many uh, husbands feel like that? Want to spend more time at work, yeah. Things were working there and everybody seemed to appreciate my efforts. Pam didn't like the fact that it was easier for me to be at work than with her. She agreed it was critical time in our, a critical time in our life. Now this is Pam's point of view. I, Pam, had given up a nice house, great friends, and a satisfying leadership role for sanctified insanity. Over the next few weeks, depression hit me like a tidal wave. I was struggling with who I was, what my new role would be in this church and community, and how I would survive such a drastic change. One day, I went to uh, the closet to get something off the top shelf. In reaching for the box, everything off the top shelf fell on me and scattered across the floor. I hate it here, I cried. The next thing I knew, I was sitting on top of a load of dirty laundry, sobbing. I don't know how long I sat there, but in, in toddled my two little boys. Mommy, what's wrong, they asked. I moaned. I don't know. I gathered them onto my lap as I rocked them and played. God, I know this is not the abundant life you planned. Bill has been paying a huge price. He's been coming home to complaints and my whining. I have uh, been believing lies about him. I've said some awful things like, you don't care about me, and I know he does, and your job is more important than me and the kids. That is definitely not true. I looked around my pathetic setting and cried out to God, help me figure out what to do. I sat and rocked my boys to sleep. I picked them up and put them to bed I pulled out my Bible and read a very familiar passage in Ephesians 5. One phrase seemed to be in neon lights, the wife must respect her husband, verse 33. I looked at it again. Are you sure about this, God? Isn't there a loophole for a situation like mine? Over the next five days, I pulled my steady resources off the shelf and began to look deeply into this passage. To be honest, I was looking for the loophole that would allow me to opt out of honoring my husband. Instead, I found out, found how to opt in with the new understanding of what it meant to show respect. I came up with three things I needed to do. Um, see Bill as God sees Bill, a man worthy of respect because God created him. Speak to Bill the way God speaks to Bill, with loving, encouraging, but honest words. Serve Bill the way God serves Bill, by building him up with kindness, helping him succeed at his dream. A few days later, I called Bill up. Would you like to go to lunch? He responded rather tentatively with, I think so. He wasn't too sure what I was going to, he was going to get from me. Over lunch, I reached across the table, took his hand, and said, I'm sorry for the way I have treated you. I just want you to know, if I never get the things I think will make me happy, that's okay. From this day forward, I'm on your team. I, Bill, this is back to Bill real quick, um, can hardly explain the impact those words had on me. I've learned that the most important opinion in life to me, next to God's, is Pam's. When she says I'm doing well, I truly believe I'm doing well regardless of what others might say. On the other hand, when she's disappointed or critical, my heart sinks. I want to immediately change her opinion, and if I run into a roadblock doing that, I instinctively want to shut her out of my career decisions. So when she said, I'm on your team, my perspective on life was transformed. That got me because I think we've all been there. You know, we've all had to do some big changes because maybe our spouse had a dream. And mm -hmm. we, you know, we're at that point of because of his dream or because of her dream, I had to 
take some sacrifices. Yeah, you have to take the back seat. And there's, yeah. there's, that's how it is in marriage. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes you're pursuing one spouse's dream and the other one has to sit back for a little bit and take some sacrifices because you move to another part of the country or whatever, right. you know. Um, but then, you know, in a true relationship, it's going to take that turn. You know, you made a lot right. of sacrifices for me right. while my dreams were being made, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. met. And now it's time for your dreams. Right. And um, I just thought maybe someone out there has been there because I've seen so many couples at that point of divorce in sadness because he didn't understand her frustration. So he didn't want to come home to all of that negativity. And she w wasn't understanding he was trying his best and he couldn't figure out how to make her happy and do his dream. Right. And sometimes when you when you um, put your dream aside so your mm -hmm. spouse can fulfill his or her dream, that now I see that it's not mm -hmm. it's not because it's not in your time, but it's just not in God's time at that point. But then God brings mm -hmm. this full circle and now she's retired and now it's my time to to uh, pursue my dream. Mm -hmm. So it's like just because it's not in your time doesn't mean it can't happen. A lot of the time you just need to let God orchestrate the timing and then it will happen. Mm -hmm. You know, when we let go and let God, then things fall into place. When we fight it uphill, it ends mm -hmm. up to become a problem in the relationship. Well, and you know, it's so good that they kind of came about it before they truly had some good conversation. Because right. that's another thing that could solve that is sitting down and seeing, you know, I'm sorry I've said the things I'm saying, right. but I'm just feeling like I'm in a trap. Right. And what I didn't read is shortly after that when she said, I'm with you, I'm on your team, he found a way to get her into a rental house. Right. So they both could be happy. happy. And or at least a lot of the stress off of both of them. Yeah. Because, I mean, who who has two little kids and they can't play? I mean, it's that's torture mm -hmm. for not letting little kids play. They have to yeah. go clear on some other side of this facility uh -huh. for this playground. Well, Why didn't and they build left, it with two playgrounds? She's left all her family and yep. her friends and her community, and she's got a new one. I've been there. Yep. I've moved here to Idaho and yep. sat here with no friends and no family and no church home. And so right. I, I think that's why it touched me so much. Um, if you read the chapter two, um, what he was talking about is, you know, what can a woman do to help her husband? But there's right before that, there is what can um, the wife do to help her husband? I think I said that all wrong. The husband to help her, his <laughs> wife and the wife to help her husband. Anyways. Yeah. Basically. I understand what you said. Uh, you know, they right before that, they right. actually had another story of when she went to pursue her dream mm -hmm. and how he was frustrated because it was cut. He was trying to balance um, taking care of the boys while she went back to college and pursuing yep. um, her dream of writing. And when he finally figured it out, he actually showed up at her per, at her class with a thing of roses. Which the professor at that point, be, right before he walked in, said that chivalry and is romance is dead. <laughs> and here he shows up. Bill shows up with a yeah. dozen roses, red roses, <laughs> That's so great. and walks to. And her desk was at the middle of the classroom, and the professor's mm -hmm. just like floored. What is he doing? And yeah. so he sits. He sets the flowers down and says, I just wanted to tell you I love you. And then he jets, and then the professor's like, what are the flowers for? Is it your, for your birthday, anniversary? She goes, no. He just <laughs> wanted to tell me wanted he's to say proud that of he me. Loved, he yeah. loved me and he's proud of me. And that shut the professor up real fast because yeah. her husband just proved that he was wrong. So Yeah. So it's great. I think in that, you know, the question there is, what can you do to encourage your spouse mm -hmm. in the dreams that they're pursuing right now 
or what can you if they're pursuing the dreams and you're the support team what can you do to cheer them on and vice versa if you are pursuing your dreams just know that your spouse might be having to take do some sacrifices right. and tell them how much you appreciate them yeah correct and- yeah, and you, you don't have to give them this big, long speech uh, of, you know, about how awesome they are. It can just be a few encouraging words like, you got this. Stay the course. Mm-hmm. This is going to all be okay. Mm-hmm. You are brilliant. You are smart. You're wonderful. You're awesome. You've been great for our family. You've been great to me. You need to pursue this. Mm-hmm. You know, you can just... The littlest encouragement can go a long way. Yeah. Big time. In careers, dreams, whatever they're doing. In your marriage. Yeah. And do it as a team. And then at the end of this chapter, it also talked about deliberate dreams. Do your dreams deliberately. Talk about it together. And that's the same as setting goals. But don't be afraid to dream and then Mm. set them in motion deliberately. Like, well, if that's your dream, how can we fulfill that? What is it going to take? Is how do we get it started? Lay out a game plan. Mm -hmm. You know, figure out how to make that happen. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're both on the same page, life is going to be a lot easier. And you're going to stay married. Yeah. Believe us, you're (laughs) going to stay married (laughs) if you Mm -hmm. come up with the goals and the game plan and the dreams that you want to achieve together or separately but together as a unit, as a couple. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, and together you guys can fulfill your dreams, set some goals. We'll put in the description um, our video on setting goals. I would also recommend they have some other advice on how to set goals in Chapter 7. They also, the whole first part of chapter seven is all about the differences in how your brains work different as men and women and how you learn differently, how you lead differently, understanding some of those things, like how you make decisions. Um, You know, you might be getting frustrated with how each other makes decisions. Well, in that chapter talks about some great studies on how men and women make decisions totally different yeah and how they go shopping different how they I just don't everything <laughs> everything everything we're just wired that way we're wired differently but that's okay and you can read this and apply it and then you can actually go the same direction together instead of crashing into each other constantly and getting frustrated there's no need for the frustration if you you mm-hmm. know what is the old saying do your homework <laughs> you know yeah. So Look at it. Don't become one of those couples that we've seen so many times yeah. that is trying to pursue their dream and their spouse isn't on board or their spouse is trying to, uh, you know, do their career and, and you're not on board. And, and in the end, you end up um, just in a divorce and frustrated and alone and feeling hurt. Um, yeah. I gave up my dream of you know it's a silly dream but it it somehow came about but i wanted to be a fashion designer and um when we first were together and got married and started a family all of that got put on the back burner and i even just kind of gave it up and i even stopped sewing and just raised the family and took care of that and i can't tell you that many times it came up that well, this isn't the way I thought it was going to be. Right. But years later, yeah. this door opens for me to start sewing again. And then one thing led to another and became a bridal shop, which wasn't even the direction I wanted, but it fulfilled that desire for sewing and fashion. And then I yeah. fulfilled that later. Well, and you and she had so many uh, great experiences in owning her own bridal store. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think even fashion designing could have touched no. uh, one area of what she was able to experience as her own boss, her own bridal shop owner, mm-hmm. business success. Yeah, I still got to go to fashion just, shows. I just didn't have to put them on, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. which I found that I'm kind of, I did put on a few fashion shows. And yeah. I 
think I'd rather just watch them nowadays. <laughs> It was cool, though. <laughs> yeah. It was really cool. And then, you know, I I had given that up so that we could have the dream of having the family. Right. And then you were pursuing your career at that time. And, right. And, and our move and, and all of that. There was a that. lot going on at that time. Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm just saying don't give your desires and your dreams to God. Yeah. Communicate with your spouse. Yep. Be patient. They're going to come back. They'll yeah. come around. Yeah, don't it, lose maybe hope. Maybe in a better form than you ever even thought possible. Yeah, don't lose hope. Yeah. There's always hope. Don't lose hope. Yeah, exactly. So, well, I mean, there's a lot more to talk about about this chapter, but, I mean, I did read on video, so we bored you enough. It was a, it was a good, it was a good story. It is a really good story. I'm glad you did read it because it was a very good story, and I think you guys all needed to hear the story. Yeah. Um, yeah. You're not alone. Nope. I promise you. Nope. And uh, <laughs> you just need to uh, sit down and communicate to each other and and get on the the same um, direction, so you guys can be achieving together and not frustrated. For yeah, sure. Yeah, that's what we want for you. So thank you guys very, very much for joining yeah. us on this Friday. Heck yeah. Beautiful Friday. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> till, so, yeah. Go, go ahead. ahead. <laughs> I was going to say, till next time, Jay Krista, hope you say I do forever. <laughs> Love See you guys. guys.